the Oregon Ducks at their first bowl game in 26 years. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Football power from the smallest Division I NCAA school. The 14th annual Independence Bowl game from Shreveport. The 1989 Independence Bowl game is being brought to you by the Independent Insurance Agents of America and the many companies they represent. By the Oregon Economic Development Department. By Dana, makers of canoe, cologne for men. And by new Head & Shoulders Dry Scalp Shampoo. Helps protect your scalp's natural moisture balance. Several surgeries. The prognosis is very good. They'll not only fully recover, but they're hoping he may be able to rehabilitate and be ready for next season. But for tonight, that's going to put a burden on the Tulsa offense. Well, I mean, someone has a chance to be a hero. One of the other receivers, be it Malloy, uh, McVeigh, or a Hill, they've got the opportunity to step in there, catch a lot of passes, begin a springboard for a great season for this team next year. When you talk about the passing attack, of course, it originates with the quarterback. And both these schools have quarterbacks, well, that have done things to the record book that have erased some of the things set up by current NFL and former NFL stars from those schools. First of all, at Tulsa, P.J. Rubley has uh, obliterated Jerry Rome's staff. Well, he already holds a career passing records at Tulsa. He's a six foot four, 200 pounds, classic drop back passer. He has a good arm, good strength, good thinker. He'll pull a lot of passes tonight. A lot of them may be to the tight end because of the weather conditions. Now, in Oregon, they've had some great quarterbacks, guys like Chris Miller from the Atlanta Falcons and the great Dan Fouts, but many of their records have fallen because Bill Musgraves had a tremendous career. Well, he's had a great individual season so far. He holds the individual season records. He holds the completion records, touchdown records. Next year, the early part of the season, he'll hold all the career passing records. He's also a classic drop-back passer, 6'3", 200-pounder. Both juniors have the opportunity to showcase himself for All-American next year. Because of the cold conditions and the wind will kick up from the northeast going from left to right on your screen, the special teams will be very much involved in tonight's game. Well, special teams are always important, but with the weather, you wind up with two quarters running the ball against the wind, two quarters passing the ball when you have the, have the wind conditions. So the special teams will be extremely important. Oregon has a great punt returner in Obi, one of the fine punt returners, holds a leader in the Pac-10. They also have a great kickoff returner in Oldham, a fine quarterback, cornerback who's also an All-American. And both place kickers, though they're not tremendous on kickoffs, are very good when it comes to accuracy for point afters and for field goals, so they'll be very important tonight. The defenses are very rugged, and we'll get into them a little bit more in just a moment. Stay with us for the 14th Annual Independence Bowl game here from Shreveport, Louisiana, and we'll return on Ms. Lou TV Sports with the matchup coming up next. This game is brought to you by the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department who invites you to discover Oklahoma for your next vacation. This 14th Independence Bowl game between Oregon and Tulsa features some outstanding individual players. And right now, let's find out how some of the top players match up with this preview on the game. Pacing an offense that ranked second in the Pac-10 and scored more points than any other Oregon team in history.
Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana for the 14th annual Independence Bowl game between those white clad Oregon Ducks and the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Steve Grant and Ed Biles with you. And Oregon has not been to a bowl in 26 years. And they're going to come to a bowl. They thought they'd be coming south for the warmth of a bowl game, but it's 29. The wind chill is 14. It's colder with a chance of sleet later. And if you look at your weather maps, you saw that big Arctic front from the North Pole literally coming down to the midsection of the United States and Shreveport's at the tip of that at the bottom. Well, these two teams don't know that right now. They're fired up. Both of them are excited. They're ready to kick this thing off. They've been here for a few days. Freeport, Louisiana has been awful good to all of them. They've all enjoyed them themselves and are getting ready for the coin flip out in the middle and the fans uh, are ready to go. We're ready to go. I think we're going to have a good football game. I like the Hawaiian atmosphere of the Hurricane fans with the Hawaiian lays around their necks and the team colors. One thing about this ball, it may not be the biggest, but they sure do provide a lot of fun for the kids. Yeah, they really did. There are all kind of festivities going on. Big pep rally last night. There's the referee. There goes the coin cost. Coin used by referee Alfred. And today's kickoff is a silver dollar commemorating the Bicentennial of Congress. This coin was provided by the U.S. Mint and has been designated as the official bowl coin of the 1989-90 postseason. He declined the coin flip, apparently, here. Yeah. Well, I think they, they deferred to the second half. half. They <laughs> also looked like they won the toss, and because of the win, they deferred to take their choice in the second half. Oregon, of course, now will be going against the wind in this first quarter. Now, the wind isn't exactly blowing straight into Oregon's face anymore. It's not going north to south. It's northeast. So it's kind of angular. Yeah, it's really kind of been gusting around. When we first came out, it was really just going from, from the left to the right the screen as you look at it which is really north and south but now it's kind of gusting around and it may not be as big a factor as we originally thought al ford's the referee nathaniel anderson the umpire dr norbert ackerman the lineman line judge bob patrick bob lee the side judge william stanton the field judge and ted thomas the back judge tulsa six and five there's musgrave he's loosening up on the sidelines for oregon dave raider is the tulsa coach in his second year and Rich Brooks, the head coach of the Oregon Ducks in his 13th year, and he says, you know, one of the most important things that happened this year, we cracked that psychological seventh victory uh, in our season. And they had never done that under him before. Well, Rich started out, the, first, you know, the early years, he was trying to rebuild that program. Now, there's, of course, there's a shot of the officials down on the field that we just told you about. But the last six years, Rich Brooks has been 34 and 31 at Oregon. So he's got the program where he wants it. He's had a good year. He, he beat some teams that they hadn't beaten in a while. Arizona, Arizona State, folks like the, of that nature. UCLA. Uh, UCLA. Well, he's, you know, I think he's got the program coming, and this is a good shot in the arm for him coming to this bowl game. They've got Chris Oldham deep for the Oregon Ducks and Michael McClellan. I like that Rod Jackson. Well, number two, of course, is well, number two, of course. But Oldham's a guy Oldham. that's going to bring that back. Now, Oregon, by the way, brought 106 players from the great Northwest down here. There's Oldham, who's third in the NCAA with that return average. Hasn't had a touchdown off a return, but he's capable at any time. And David Feast will do the kicking off. Neither team has had a great success on their kickoffs, but they have to get it high for the coverage men to get down there. No question of that. Now, Oldham, of course, won the Blue-Gray game. He's going to play in the East-West game. He was first team, Mislu senior All-American. He's quite an athlete. The second in kickoff returns last year. So Tulsa moving left to right in the dark blue home uniforms against Oregon in the white with gold. And here's the kickoff, and it's a line drive, and they certainly keep it away, but it'll have to be fielded down on the two-yard line and stopped down at the 12-yard line. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane stopping Ward. And making that tackle was Greg Jones. Here's Musgrave, will be the quarterback for the Oregon Ducks, and he'll lead the quack attack, Derek Lavelle will be one of the running backs along with Latin Barry. There's a guy who just doesn't know when to quit. Terry Obi at one wide out. Tony Hargain will get the start today. He's the junior. And those guys are very, very capable. We'll get to the tight ends and the interior linemen in a moment, but you see Musgrave statistics as Oregon begins. First and 10 on their own 13 against the win. And they start with a reverse. Leave it to Rich Brooks, giving it to Terry Obi wide open. He'll get himself a first down, and he stopped at the 23-yard line. A nice open field tackle by Eric Candy Bars, the cornerback for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Interior line, Kurt Dykes. He's going to play in the senior in Japan Bowls for the Oregon Ducks. Chris Yusko, who's played 45 consecutive games. Colin Hall, the center. Todd Gunsman, the right guard. 
David Collinsworth, the right tackle, and the tight end will be Joe Merton for the University of Oregon. That's an amazing record when you talk about that Cusco who is 40. This is the 46th consecutive game that he started. That, that's amazing. That'll, that record will probably never be broken because their program now, they won't be starting freshmen. Plus, they played Hawaii, so they got the 12th game, and now they're in that bowl. That was Obi. Split way out there, got that first down. They give it to the second man, Drew. Split the and the swarming Tulsa Hurricane defense stops him right there. Dan Parabrella is one of the tacklers, and we'll get a chance to right now meet them. Lenny Williams is the junior safety for the Golden Hurricane. Eric Bars, the cornerback. Craig Anderson, another cornerback for Tulsa. And Chris Briscoe will be starting, but he'll alternate a lot with Mark Palmer. That's the secondary. We're just underway first quarter. They lost a yard, second and 11 from the 22. And we'll meet the rest of the Tulsa defense in just a moment. Out of the eye come the Oregon Ducks with two wideouts. Musgrave has the ball stripped right out of his hand. I think Oregon may have gotten it back. Great defensive effort by Richard Wales, who you get a good look at right there. This guy's really been pumped up. Richard Wales in the defense, Dan Tarabella. Also, Phil Holmes, the unsung hero at nose guard. Mike Rawson, a co-captain for Tulsa. Derek Williams, fine linebacker. And Mike White, who says his favorite player is Mike Singletary. Looks like him. Sidney Prince getting the start today. Matt Luke has not been allowed to dress because of disciplinary reasons broke a team rule. The rules you have to abide by. Third and 18 from the Oregon 15 against the win. Got a slot in both the left and right side. And they give it to Latin Barry, and he is trapped right away after a gain of two. So Tulsa's defense has done an outstanding job. Well, their decision to defer to the half this is exactly what they wanted to have happen. Kick off, hold them deep in their own territory, and force them to punt against this win. Tulsa to begin the first series with great field position, probably somewhere around the 50-yard line. Here's the deep man for the Golden Hurricane, and that's an interesting man right there. Frank Cassano, the backup quarterback, who has the best hands, and he's probably one of the few backup quarterbacks playing punt return. Looks like they're going to come after, too. There's 10 of them up on the line of scrimmage. Mark Penzo, now they drop back. He's able to kick them into the wing. The thing is angling out of bounds. It'll be deep in Oregon territory, so the Tulsa Golden Hurricane will have a good chance. 12-14 to go in the first quarter of play. We're scoreless at the Independence Bowl. This head coach in the NCAA Division I football, Dave Raiders, 32. He'll age quickly. <laughs> 1962, I was the youngest head coach in major college football, but you age very quickly. First and 10 from the 37 of Oregon. Rubley just dumps one off into the middle. He gets it to Brett Adams. Out of the backfield, Adams down deep, one man back, and they... Stop him just at the six-yard line. Roy Gary to safety. Boy, boy, they came out, Steve. They came out with a two tight end, two wide receivers, ran a middle screen, and took it all the way down there. There's Mark Bruce, a Canadian player. Brett Adams, the backfield men back there behind Rubley. Marcus McVeigh, one wide out. Archie Malloy replacing Dan Bidson. And Ed, you had a great point right there. They come out with all kinds of formations. Three wide receivers, two tight ends, four wide receivers, and right now first and goal from the seventh for the Golden Hurricane with Malloy way out to the right. And Adams will be stopped maybe a yard. Right, they ran their short yardage offense. That just was a weak side lead play. There's the offensive line. You like this kid, Ostrowski. We'll get to him. Gus Spanos, whose younger brother, is also on the team. Center Todd McGuire, short fused guy. He likes to pop people. Wes McCaleb, he's the steadying influence over there at the right guard and the right tackle, Chris Francher. And the tight end, Gary Tree. It'll be second and goal from the six yard line. Single back formation, two wide outs. They've got McVeigh and Malloy. Gonna pop one down to McVeigh over his head. On the coverage was Chris Olden. It'll be third and goal from the six. The defensive line, Matt Labonte for the Oregon Ducks. David Cusano will be the nose tackle. Andre Williams, who's done a superb job just coming out of nowhere for them. Yarny Jensen will be one linebacker. Mark Kearns, Joe Farwell, and Peter Brantley. Brantley is the big tackle man there. Get the secondary in a moment, third and six. Bratcher and Jackson in the backfield for blocking. Lots of time for Rubley. Fires one over the middle. It's picked up by Oldham. Oldham picks it up for the Oregon Ducks at the two-yard line. What a saving interception. 
Oh, did he make a great play? He read the play perfectly with the outside receiver, went to the inside, he went right down in there and took the ball away. Just a great play. Olam shows you right there. That's his 14th interception. You can also see why he's been an All-America. All Take a look at him coming here. Watch him make the break for the ball. Watch him go underneath right there, make the break on the ball, look it all the way in. Well, that's a great play. Oldham seventh on the year. He leads the team. 14th career, so the Oregon Ducks come out. The Tulsa fans trying to inspire their defense because Oregon is 99 yards away from the score against the win. Oregon will take the snap right on the goal line. And Musgrave calls a timeout. Explain that one, Coach. Well, he didn't like what he liked. But he may have only had 10 men in there for some reason. So we are scoreless with 11.06 to go in the first quarter of play. And we'll be back to the Independence Bowl after this word from your local stations. Those are the sentiments of the Tulsa fans. The reason Oregon had to call that timeout, their offensive line didn't get out there until 17 seconds were gone on the uh, uh, clock. And so they were going to be penalized. Quickly up the middle as Latin Berry gets him a little breathing room, maybe to the four-yard line. A lot of blue uniforms in on that tackle. Well, they want to run the ball, of course, and use as much of the clock as they can because, again, they're going against the wind. But when you're backed up like this, they don't want to make a mistake and turn it right back over to Tulsa. Tulsa had a great opportunity. They didn't take advantage of it. When you're the underdog, as Tulsa is, you have to take advantage of those opportunities. Second and eight, good look at that offensive line. They had some poor running the first half, but then at the Arizona State game, the fifth game of the season, they rearranged their interior line as Obi goes in motion. Things fell into place after that. Play action fake. Musgrave from his end zone. And good coverage on Obi, so he overthrew it. Well, I think that was a good uh, decision by Musgrave. He just threw that ball away. There was no one out there. He knew he was in danger of being tackled in the end zone for a safety. Just threw it out of bounds. Incomplete pass. Now third down situation. Myers and Williams on the coverage for Tulsa. It is cold, folks. As you saw, the wind chill factor might even get down to single digits tonight. But these are hardy wild fans for both the Ducks and the Golden Hurricane. Reitzig way out to the right side for the Oregon Ducks. And Obi to the left. High backfield. Great drop. Musgrave. And it is intercepted by Tulsa. He was looking for Obi, so we've had a pair of interceptions in the early going. Coming up with it is Craig Jones. A cornerback who's starting today on the right side because Craig Anderson, the regular starter, got hurt in practice. Well, this is what happens sometimes when you throw the ball against the wind. The ball will sail on him. Watch the ball sail. See it sailing up in the air. Look at the effect the wind has. Craig Jones, of course, has great speed. He was a state 100, 200 meter champ when he was in high school out of Dallas, Texas. That's his third interception of the year. Now watch the ball sail. Boom. Watch, look at the wind get underneath it right down there and just sail over the top of the receiver's head. Again, Tulsa with a great field position. First and ten from the 28 of Oregon for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Rubley gets it off to Brett Adams. And Adams is tough to bring down. He's inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Yarny Jensen made the tackle, but boy, give the offensive line credit. Woo, take a look at the job that Chris Thatcher and McCollop did here opening up that hole. Look at that hole open up. Now, that's your basic bread and butter play with a runoff tackle. Straight man blocking. He has the opportunity to take it to the outside, break it inside the tackle or offside, off the guard. Adam, great job of picking the hole, picking up the first down. Tulsa's got some big interior linemen, much bigger than the Oregon defensive linemen. It is speed and finesse of Oregon against strong, strong offensive blocking as Rubley calls an audible. You see something in the defense on first and ten from the 18. Gives it to Adams again, a bit of a hole, but it closes up as Mark Kearns makes the tackle for the Oregon Ducks. Kearns, a senior from Walnut Creek, California. Well, basically, that was the same play that they had ran on on first down. He got up there and audible like maybe he's going to run something else and come right back to their bread and butter play. Their off tackle is their bread and butter play. Straight man blocking to the offensive lineman. Adams just looking to pick where the hole might be. Nine of the last 19 games have been for over 100 yards for Adams. He's seventh all time at Tulsa. He needs 71 yards to pass Derek Ellison on the all time list. A couple of men go into motion and switch around. And again to the left side, it's Adams, but this time Oregon stops him at the line of scrimmage. And one thing Tulsa does, they do spread out the field, don't they? Well, they do that, but also a great job there by Mark Kearns, the middle linebacker. He had 120 tackles already this year. He read that, got over there, 
makes all the defensive adjustments where you see him looking at the sideline, getting the defensive call right now from the coaches. He'll call it very physical player. He's been in on 634 plays this season going into this game. Turns very good against the run. Great instincts. On third and seven from the Oregon 15, we're scoreless. First quarter, eight and a half minutes to go. Good draw situation. Thompson goes in motion. Big rush, and now Rubley tucks it away. Here's Rubley heading for the end zone. Rubley will go out of bounds at the two and a half yard line. Well, you saw Rubley show his great athletic ability. Now they caught Oregon in man for man coverage, and when he went back, he had good pressure on him. Now Oregon's going to be playing man for man. Watch him all go off with the receivers. Everybody run off the receivers. Once that hole opens up, you can see him still chasing the receivers. Now they have to come off of their man and get to where Rubley is at. You see him coming downfield. He knows now he's got the first down. Now he starts heading towards the sidelines to keep him taking the pounding. A little fake like he might still throw the ball. Now he's trying to get out of bounds. Double tight ends for Tulsa. They give it to Adams. He's close to the goal line. Did he crack the play? Rubley threw his hands up as if it were a touchdown, but we see no indication from the striped shirted man. Well, that was awful close. Jeff Beener inserted into the game the freshman redshirt tight end. He is short. Well, let's take a look here. He's going to go over. And go over the left guard, McCallop, and over the center, Todd McGuire. He got it down there awful close. He could, all he's got to do is get about inches. Now, it looked like it might have been in there for a touchdown. I'll tell you what, that's awful close. Adams and Bratcher in the backfield. Adams piled up, touchdown Tulsa. Six to nothing in favor of the Golden Hurricane. Well, and again, they've had great field position. They deferred, they, they won the toss and deferred, thinking about the win, and so far that has paid off with Tulsa Hurricanes. Adams has picked up 17 yards so far in the early going. And now David Feast will try the extra point. And it is now seven to nothing. So Tulsa making good use of the wind at their back. And we'll return to the Independence Bowl with the score, seven to nothing in favor of Tulsa, right after this. Goal line, you see how low those defensive line, they've got to get low, they want to get underneath the blockers, they did a good job with that. The linebackers have to come up over the top and make that force. Defensive linemen did their job by getting low in penetration. The linebackers have to get in almost shoulder to shoulder, hit one on the left and one on the right. Difficult play to stop. 27 yards in six plays over two and a half minutes so that was good for Tulsa they'll keep that win at their back they lead seven to nothing well, again great field position they started on the 27 yard line didn't have too far to go after that interception Beast kicks it off with the wind at his back they try to keep it away from over they don't succeed he got it to the 20 to 45 and stopped at the 27 yard line making the tackle for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane Brian Smith from Mount Vernon New York so he came a long way well he put a good hit on there also well, nothing like a special teams man who gets to make that tackle. Well, that fires up the rest of your football team. When a special teams player, they get excited because that's only the plays usually that they're in on. They go over to the side. Look at him over there right now. Just everybody on that sideline has got them all excited and all fired up because he put one good hit. That's the value, again, of a good special teams player. Oregon will be first and 10 from their own 27 with two wideouts and an eye formation. Musgrave, play action fake. Drills one on a crossing pattern to Tony Hargain, and he's at the 40-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. Tony Hargain, who has 36 catches now for nearly 600 yards. He did a good job. He just went around down, come down to the inside, a little play action fake. Now Hargain's on the outside here to the right. He's coming down, working to the inside, finds the open spot, went up, cut that ball, cradled into his hands, and picked up the first half. Reitzig and Hargain are the two split men now with a single back for the Oregon Ducks and two tight ends. Lavelle, the only man back there. They'll move that pocket. They go to the left. Again, they drill one. This time to right six. He's inside the 40 of Tulsa to the 38-yard line before he's finally tripped up by Eric Bennett. Right six has got that reputation of making those acrobatic catches. This one, just a normal one, though. Look at the strength in Musgrave's arm. Now he's going out to his left. That's one of the toughest passes to throw when you're going to your left and then kind of throwing back against your body. Showed why he's one of the top quarterbacks in the country as a junior and again should be a great one next year. He writes a credit. He's a former walk-on who actually quit the team and then came back. He wasn't sure he was going to be able to stay on without the scholarship at the time. 
First and ten for the Ducks on the Tulsa 37. They're trailing seven nuts, and here comes Latin Barry. Bust through a hole, and he's to the 25 of Tulsa. Oh, what a great trap play. They just ran a great trap right up the middle. The guard went across and just did an outstanding job of making that block. Take a look. Take a look at number 60. You see Husko, the guard pulling across, making that trap right up through the middle, cleared it out. And of course, you can see the strength of Latin Barry. He's averaging 5.6. He's a good pro prospect. I think he's one of those through the hole right now. Look at that big hole. But you are talking about that 5'10", 207-pound back that the pros love. Against the win, the Ducks are first and 10 at the Tulsa 26-yard line. Two wideouts again. Strikes it and hard hit. Over the middle, incomplete intended for the tight end, Polya Tap, who is generally in on goal line plays. That's a real surprise by Rich Brooks. I'm telling you, amazing there. thing about him. He has caught seven passes this entire season, five of them for touchdowns. Now, that's one of the few times they've thrown the ball to him upfield, but that's an amazing record. Seven catches, five of them for touchdowns. But maybe he drops the one upfield like he did that one. Maybe that's the He's reason for that. that run. He has an uncanny ability to shake <laughs> off a defender down tight. Second and ten from the 26. 5.59 to go. In the first point. They stop him this time. He gets to about the 23-yard line before Derek Williams makes the tackle, the junior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And Dan Terabrella did a good job reading that also, the defensive uh, right end or right tackle, depending on how we want to call him, this 3-4 defense. So they'll start, start it upfield, just go right back to the inside. And of course, this come, becomes a key third-down situation because they would have to kick the field goal against the win. Reitzig and Hargan went way out. Bell and Berry in the eye. Musgrave throws into traffic intended for his tight end, Merton. And Eric Pars made a sensational breakup of the play. Eric Pars is very proud. He, he's a good player. He's got a wife and two children to support. Peaches is his wife. He's got Kendall, who's three months, and Eric Jr., was a couple of years old, so he plays like every play's important. Did, did a good job. They concealed that as if they were playing man-for-man -man coverage, but in reality, they were playing zone. And Barr started back like he was in man, then released and came back off of it. Did a good job with that. He's cousin of Daryl Green, man. Plays for the Washington Redskins. He'll try a 40-yard attempt for Craig McCullough, who has a 47-yarder against UCLA. This is very low. I don't know if it was partially blocked, but nothing worked right. And so Oregon comes up short on a good drive. I think psychologically, when you're trying to kick that 40 yarder and you haven't had great success, you worry about that win. 5 11 to go, first quarter of play. The score Tulsa 7, Oregon nothing. I was with you from the Independence Bowl. We're at 7 0, Tulsa leading Oregon. Lou Spanos got a hand on that. He's a freshman. And he got a block on that last field goal try. As Rubling to do a play action. He's got lots of time and overthrows his tight end, Gary Tree. Good coverage by Oregon's defensive secondary and linebackers. He wanted to come out and throw to his right. That wasn't open. He looked the middle. By then, the protection was going to break down, and he just kind of threw it away over to the left side. But he looked across the field. Had good protection to begin with, but the secondary coverage was excellent by Oregon's hurt. Talking about Lou Spanos and Gus Spanos, their mom and dad back in Pittsburgh. A couple good Greek boys. They say Takanis to their mom and dad. Well, you said that perfectly. It sounds Greek to me, though. Second and ten. Fred Adams is in the backfield. He's got 47 all-purpose yards so far in the first quarter. And they pitch it to him. Oldham trips him up at the 29. Chris Oldham was not a stranger to making tackles. He had 66 coming into the game. Little option play. Right down the line of scrimmage. Moves in on him. He made the pitch to Adams. Adams picked up the yardage. Of course, Adams carries that ball. He's carried the ball 224 times this year going into this ball game, which is an awful lot. Over 1,000 yards. There's Rich Brooks, the head coach for 13 seasons with the Oregon Ducks. Very proud of his team. And Denny Fuel, the defensive coordinator there with the mustache. On third and four from the Tulsa 29, the Golden Hurricane fans cheering them on. Almost in the backfield before Adams got the ball was one of the Ducks. They stopped him short of the first down. Initially coming in there was Kearns. Adams was ripped up by Eric Castle, a safety. Well, I think they tried to really wanted to run the draw play in there, but they had the extra defensive backs and coming on a little bit of a blitz situation. The penetration messed up the timing of that draw. Now Danny Phelps will come in and punting with sort of the wind in his back. 
He had seven punts against Louisiana Tech here in Louisiana. This is not a friendly state for Tulsa. They're 0-9 playing in this state. Of course, Obie's back there. Barely gets that away. It takes a Tulsa roll, and Obie just better fall on it. That ball's loose. He never had possession, and Tulsa recovered. Well, it was an interesting situation there, Steve. Looked like they had the punt block on, which they did. They came after him. He started like he was going to run it, then he realized he didn't have a chance. Then he finally got, got his hands in the ball, takes that funny bounce, and he can't find the handle. That ball bounces crazy. Now, there is a good play. Well, then knock him away and let someone else recover, one of your teammates recover. Watch the good play here now by number 49. Now, that's an excellent play by Jimerson from Jefferson, Texas. Again, Tulsa has great field position. First and ten from the Oregon 36. Seven to nothing, Tulsa leading. Three and a half minutes to go. Adam stopped at the 35-yard line. Oregon's defense fired up again. They're called upon to go to work after this strange weather condition here is really putting the rest of the offense. Well, of course, you know, the wind has really died down a little bit. It's not as bad as it was when the game started. Oregon has had two turnovers here in the first quarter, and that really hurt them when you're trying to hang on to the ball and use the clock. Again, an audible by Rublin, and this is McKaylee trying to get his blocking assignment proper. Second and nine from the 35. Fumble! Ball is loose. Big pile up. The Ducks may have gotten it away from the Golden Hurricane. They're going to unpile it. And how many times under the pile is the ball changing hands? Well, there's a lot of struggling fighting going on underneath there right now, and it looked like Oregon could come up with it. Yes, they have. Mark Kearns with his second fumble recovery of the season. Well, he's their defensive leader. Let's we'll see if he... Well, just that didn't follow the center. That quarterback now, when that center moves, the quarterback has to move right with him. That upper hand, he did not move that upper right hand when the center moved out of there. That's what caused that exchange. You think the weather, the, the coldness down there has a little bit to do with this. The ball sailing a little bit. Fumbles, four turnovers here in the first quarter. 2.52 to go in the first quarter. 7 to nothing, Tulsa. They've blown two great opportunities inside Oregon territory. Long count by Musgrave. He whips a pass to the tight end, and it's dropped by Joe Merton, who's usually sure-handed. Merton's got 13 catches. Well, you know, sometimes you make too much a factor of the win. Look at the gloves that he's got on there. I'm sure I hope he's been practicing those gloves all year long. I'd say he's been practicing his receiving. He made that starting position because he's a good run blocker. But over the year, he's worked to improve his receiving. Well, he's 6'4", 245. He does have good size. And he runs a 4 side, which is good speed for a tight end. Musgrave, 2 for 12, much to the delight of David Rader and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. It'll be second and 10 from the Oregon 35 for the Ducks. They have a slot to the left. That's where they roll. Musgrave has a man wide open. It's Hargain still on his feet, still on his feet. And there's Hargain pulled down from behind. Derek Williams and Mike Rawson. Boy, they had to fly there. Well, give Mike Rawson a lot of credit. That would have been a touchdown. He's rolling out to his left. To the outside receiver, you see Hargain coming down to the inside. Now, he does a good job of running the ball after he catches it. Look, at he makes one miss. Now, once he gets to that outside there, there's nothing but daylight. Look at Rosen chasing down from behind. Now, that's a six foot six, 262 pound senior from Edmond, Oklahoma. Great play by Mike Rosen. Well, Rosen has to really play hard because he's also married. He and Renee just had a nine pound baby girl named Skyler last week. So <laughs> he's got to impress the scouts. Another reverse. They did it early in the game at work. Here's Obi getting the first down, getting a great block, and getting hold down from behind at the 18 by number 44. After Chris Yusko makes a great block, Mike White made the tackle for Tulsa, but Chris Yusko, who started 46 games in a row now, really let that one go. And that play really wasn't that good, but Obi wanted to make up for that fumble up. He did a great job of running that reverse over there wasn't there there was a couple of tacklers over there but he made them miss to pick up the yardage it would be great to see a wide open football game first and ten from the tulsa 18 for the ducks who are trailing lavelle and barry in the backfield Derek lavelle has hardly touched the ball today play action fake to him into the end zone harking corner can't hold it And they've been getting open, though. They've been running good pattern. And I think he knew he was so close to the sideline, he was going to have to lay out. I think he was as much concerned with trying to catch the ball and staying in bounds. And sometimes when you do that, there's just a little bit of concentration to keep you from catching it. 
Hargain comes out and Jeff Thomas with number 83, another tight end goes in. It is 1.38 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 Tulsa leads. With that second reverse, Obi's the leading rusher. One wide out, two tight ends in the I formation for the Ducks. And LaBelle gets the ball. Banged out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Eric Barr made the hit. A little unusual formation, or second down and, and ten, go with two tight ends, one wide out, running the play into that short side end. Probably anticipating maybe Tulsa slanting and moving into the wide side of the field. Look at those career records. Take a look at that. We're 193 carries, which is, of course, all up. Look at those career records. Here. 3,214 yards, 45 touchdowns. Whew. He's going to play in the Japan Bowl after the season's over. Also. In, in those records, he broke Ahmad Rashad when he was known as Bobby Moore in Oregon. Now Obi is on the near side right now. From the eye, two tight ends again. Rolling to the right, Musgrave gets it away and hits Latin Berry short of the first down at about the 12-yard line. Well, again, Musgrave shows you his great athletic ability. Derek Williams is all over the top of him when he's back there to throw in that pass, and he just got it away made the completion but he showed you his athletic ability on that particular pass 129 to go first quarter and the oregon fans nearly 5,000 of them with chartered planes all the way down here to shreveport wanted them to go for it but they're going to try to get some points i've heard enough duck calls in the last two days the quack attack <laughs> the quack attack now mccallum who had one block will try one now from 29 yards away this time from the right side of the field now this is his range now He's had three field goals five times this year in a game. That kick is up, and it is good, and the Oregon Ducks crack the duck egg on the scoreboard, and they now trail 7-3. to three. But, you know, Ed, you made a good comment during this. We've had a lot of wide-open football, despite the cold, as you see the fans bundled up. These two coaches know it's a bowl game. A lot of seniors, they're playing all out. Have some fun with it. Have some excitement. Do things that, you know, we've seen reverses. We saw a middle screen to open up the game by Tulsa. Yeah, that's the kind of football you love to see and love to do. You know, we were talking to Rich Brooks, and I asked him if there were any surprises that he's got, you know, for the bowl. He says, no, nah, just the standard you'll put in. He says, nothing exotic like I did 13 years ago when I came in the Pac-10 <laughs> and felt we had no chance. Well, Mike Pilotti, his offensive coordinator, and his offensive coaches, Gary Gamble, the running back coach, Steve Greatwood who works with the tackles and tight end. You know they're going to have some things up their sleeve. Nobody goes in the bowl game without doing a few things differently. That kind of keeps the, that gets the concentration level of the players up. If you put some new plays in, they've got to kind of be thinking a little bit instead of the same old stuff they ran all year long. Willie Hill is back there to receive this kickoff, and there is a typical fan who's very smart. He's got that blanket. A lot of, uh, mentioned Oregon bringing a lot of fans. Uh, look at that duck and, there. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Now, <laughs> is he having fun? Tulsa fans braved a lot of uh, tough conditions to drive here. It's about a six-hour drive to Shreveport. So Willie Hill who broke a bone in the hand of, uh, in the fourth game. I'm in a little trouble going to one side because of that. He's got that cast on one side on the left. One thing about this Tulsa team, offensively, they've got a lot of young players out there. Nine of those starters are back next year. Dan he's down. He's down. Yeah, he's he is down, and that doesn't Woo! prevent him from getting hit. That should be a high. flag. That should be a flag. Yes. The Arnie Jensen yes. did it. Yes. That's a good call by the official. The whistle had blown. He had ran another 10 yards. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He rang his bell. Now, watch his knee go down. Right now, the play is dead. Officials are blowing the whistle right now. Now, he gets up. He's not sure. Watch his hip. Boom. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> Yarny Jensen. Now, he's a senior. He knows. He knows better than that. The guy's running. You got, you, you know, that's one of those things you can As the play was over, a personal foul. Oregon fans, obviously, right in front of them, they didn't appreciate that call, Steve. But, you know, maybe he didn't see him. After all, Hill did start running again. But the key is the whistle. The officials are blowing the whistle down there. And I'm sure there were two officials right on top of it. I'm sure they were blowing that whistle. Well, after that seven-play, 54-yard drive for a field goal, where now Oregon trails Tulsa 7-3, to it's Tulsa's ball on their own 25-yard line. And it goes to Bruce. And he is knocked down for a loss. A good tackle by Rory Gary, among others, from his safety position. The guy is in there because he can hit. Sano, the nose guard, did a good job. He was working right down the line scrimmage on that play also. I think Tulsa will have a hard time running to the outside. Of course, there's a the scoring drive. They went 54 yards, seven plays, a minute and 26 off the clock. Well, 
Dominated by the 29-yard field goal. Second and 14 from their 21. And the Golden Hurricane with their men way, way outside. As Rootley is calling an audible again. He needs to back a guy off the line because you can't have too many offensive linemen. You get penalized. Meanwhile, the bay is open. Short of the first down. Stopped at the 32-yard line. On the coverage for the Ducks was Oldham, also Derry. Well, there's really a truly Oki from Muskokia, the old song. That's Marcus Sr., 5'10", 178 pounder. That's only his 16th catch of the year. Now, someone like that has to step up and play good to replace Pitts in the season. Looked it all the way in and picked up the yardage that he could. Of course, it put him in a third down situation now they had the opportunity with only third and four to pick up the first down. Dan Vincent, your teammates have dedicated this one to you. I know you're watching back there. We all wish you a fast recovery on third and four. And a good, good pass to number 83, Brian Thompson. The freshman redshirt from Tulsa, from Nathan Hale High School, a local hero. It's going to be the end of the, that's going to be the last play of the first quarter, Steve. Thompson come in and catch that ball now. That's a good job for redshirt and freshman coming in and making a play. Looking at it in. All his receivers done a good job of concentrating. So the first quarter comes to a conclusion with Tulsa leading Oregon 7 to 3 and will return to the Independence Bowl in Shreveport after this word from your local station. The second quarter action at the Independence Bowl game from Shreveport, Louisiana, where Tulsa in the blue moving right to left leads Oregon 7 to 3. Rootley has passed three times, completed three for six for 50 yards, and now he goes to the ground where Mark Bruce picks up some yardage. Bruce is the junior transfer from Alberta, Canada. I'll tell you, you'll see something exciting. The flag on the left is on the left end of the stadium. It's blowing in one direction. The flag on the right is on the opposite end of the stadium, and that's blowing in an opposite direction. I don't think I've ever seen a stadium where the flags are blowing so much in different directions. As you look around at the top of the stadium, what flag's blowing one way and the other direction? The weather's even confused. It'll be second and four after the six-yard pickup by Bruce. And Bruce again, but this time he stopped. 47, Andy Connor, who started in the Arizona game, the fourth game of the year. He's a star of the future, a sophomore from Klamath River, California. It looks like we're going to see a ball game. It's going to be wide open. I think we're going to see a lot of scoring for this night's over, Steve. Both teams have been wide open, both of them doing the right thing. And as the quarterback settled down, I think we'll see him start picking them pretty good. Top heavy and they're scoring early in the game, but both these teams are not the, the biggest or the deepest. They get worn down late. Well, I would think Oregon has a little more depth than Tulsa. Third and four from the 40 yard line of Tulsa. Freak was in motion. That ball is overthrown. Well, good coverage out there, though, by Ron, uh, Rory Derry. He was in great position. That, that was a difficult pass. Would have been difficult for Ruby to complete that because of the defensive position that Derry was in. Well, the quarterbacks and the coaches from both sides watched a lot of the tapes as we see Obi getting ready in deep punt formation. Mike working the offensive coordinator, receiver coach, was over there telling official a little pass interference on that play. Mike does a good job. 13-41 to go in the first half of play. 7-3, Tulsa leads. And he Phelps. It's a great roll inside the Oregon 20. And it goes to the 14-yard line. Good coverage by Tulsa. 13-28 to go, second quarter. Tulsa 7, Oregon 3. When you're looking for insurance, look for the symbol of your independent insurance agent. Over 120,000 independent agents throughout America offer you the right car and homeowner's insurance, the right business insurance, the right health and life insurance. Independent agents represent several companies, not just one. So they can offer you the right insurance at the right price. Look for the symbol of your independent agent in the yellow pages. You're more than one company agent. Join the U.S. Armed Forces. You're in with top quality people and top quality experiences. Opportunity is waiting for you. In the U.S. Armed Forces. Thank you. 
This is what it's all about, the Independence Bowl Trophy. And tonight, either Oregon or Tulsa will be the crowd owners of the trophy for winning the Independence Bowl. First and ten for the Ducks on their own 15. They trail by four points with the second quarter of play. Musgrave back to pass, and he throws one out of bounds. Musgrave's now four for 11 for 62 yards in the passing department. This is the first time the Ducks have the ball moving left to right. And good coverage by Tulsa. Boy, he also had good pressure on him. That's the key to fast, de fast defense is get some pressure on that quarterback. The defensive lineman, Rosalem, Holmes, Terabrella have been doing a pretty good job of getting in on Musgrave's face. So it'll be second and ten. Reitzig way out to the right side. Obi in a slot to the right side. Lavelle and Barry are the running backs from the eye. Now they shift out of it. And it is Barry, who doesn't get too much, he gets out to about the 17 or 18 before Sidney Prince, who's starting for Matt Luke. Sidney Prince came up with the football. He thought he had recovered a, a fumble. Shout to the fans. Nothing like being a student at one of the bowl games. Yeah, lots of fun, even if you're not on the team. Those Oregon folks have come a long way, and they have enjoyed themselves. Brooks says this is the most balanced offensive attack he's had in the 13 years since he has been at Oregon. Two slots now for the Ducks. Single back of the bell. Throws a nice block, too, as Musgrave throws it to Harkin, who catches the ball beautifully at the 47 of Oregon before he is racked down by Mark Palmer. The free safety, a senior from Olathe, Kansas. Boy, he did a great job of laying this zone coverage. You see the linebackers? Now look at him lay over the top here. Lay over the top of the linebackers in front of the deep safety. Musgrave showed excellent touch on that pass. Not an easy pass to throw over the top of the line. They were dropped back there pretty good. They had pretty good depth on their on their drop, but he laid it in between the deep the secondary and the linebackers. Oregon racking up a lot of yardage. Coming into this drive, they had a total of 109 yards in the first quarter, and but two turnovers that were costly. This is Derek Lavelle at midfield. And that's where they're going to mark it, right on the midfield stride. Good play by Eric Bennett and Sidney Prince. Oregon had pulled their backside guard and tackle leading that play, trying to get them up through the hole to lead the play, but Bennett and Prince, both of them read it and played right down to the linebackers to play slide right down and right up in the hole and held up a couple yard game there's Lavelle on the season his stats and Dykes and Musco are good pulling guards and uh, tackles to that left side again Lavelle that's a bit of a hole up the middle gets inside the 45 to about the 43 yard line in on the tackle was Bennett we'll take a look now the job that Kurt Dykes and Who's go do here? Take a look at the hole. You see him driving off, controlling line of scrimmage. There's a lead blocker coming in there. He cuts off of that block. For 73, Todd Kuzman was a player who he tried to cut back off of that. Big size. That, that's a big offensive line. 280, 272, 247, 280, 270, 245 pound tight end. And they switch him. The double tight end on less than a yard. And a flag is dropped. Now it still says five seconds on the clock. And it'll probably be against the Ducks. Let's listen to Al Ford. And a dead ball foul that lined up in the neutral zone. Costly mistake because they were very close well, to the first I, down. You know, you know the, the ball hadn't been snapped. I was amazed that we lined up in the neutral zone. I wonder if there's some movement in there. But yet, that they lined up, the ball had to be snapped before they were offside, we were. I'm not quite sure of that, uh, huh? I'm not quite sure of that call. Uh, sure they there was have a an penalty there. possibly. That well, again, they had to wait until the, for the ball had been snapped. Oh, well. The bell comes out. Hargain comes in. They have a second receiver now on third and six. Musgrave plants, fires, and completes the ball. To Lavelle no, 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 he dropped oh, the ball. Oh, he dropped it. Good he was hit. hit hard. He had it. That was Obi, who was crunched by Eric Barnes. Barnes really hit him. I thought he had the ball maybe long enough for the possession. Let's take a look at it. Probably a good call by the fish, but I thought he had good possession of it. So he goes up, catches it there. No, he never did come down. Never gets down with, with his feet. Barnes hits him. There's another shot of it from another angle. Boom. Good timing by Eric Barnes closing on that ball. That's what you got to do. Close on that ball. Going to force him to punt. Penzo will do the punting. And Cassano will be back 
He has a 21-yard punter there. This time he gets beautiful hang time on it, and a fair catch is called. And Cassano juggles it, but does hold it. So we have 10 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the second quarter of play. We'll have a change of possession with the score Tulsa 7, Oregon 3, and we'll return to the Independence Bowl after this word from your local stations. Don't wait for the last minute, because D&J Hobby is slashing prices now. The Tyco Turbo Train slashed to $49.95, the Twin Turbo $59.95, the Sky Climber Cliffhanger slashed to $59.95, and the Tyco Hovercraft $99.95. All Lionel G-Gains train sets $199.95, H-O-N-N sets starting at just $19.95. Save on 30 different RC combo packages like the Concept 30 Helicopter, just $349.95, the Duroplane, just $249.95, and the Ready to Run Rhino slashed to $159.95 at D&J Hobby and Campbell. Now open later for the holidays. At Colton Piano and Organ in Santa Clara, select the piano or organ of your choice and we'll deliver it by Christmas. Colton, the world's largest piano and organ supermarkets with over 2,000 pianos and organs in our inventory. Choose from Schaefer & Sons, Mason & Hamlet, Story & Clark, Lowry & Hammond Organs. Prices from $88 to $30,000. Let Santa deliver your piano or organ for a lifetime of music and happiness. A gift that will last for many holidays to come. From Colton Piano & Organ on Highway 101 and Montague Expressway in the Levitt's Furniture Building, Santa Clara. Brad and Biles with you from the Independence Bowl. Uh, Rich Brooks is not in the picture there. <laughs> he moved on. I think that's Rick putting on the headsets with the hood on. There he is, the head coach oh, of yeah. the Oregon Ducks. Oh, yeah. He, head coach smart enough to put something over the top of his head. Now, assistant coach, they're going to show how macho they are and how tough they are, Steve. First and 10 from the 23 for Tulsa. They just got the ball on a punt. In motion goes Archie Malloy. They lead 7-3. The handoff goes to Adams, and Brett Adams on the outside. Russell down by Mark Curran. At 93 solo tackles, there's David Rader, 32 years old. Ed, you had mentioned he'll age quite a bit. He'll age quickly, especially when, when, when you have to take and make the decision in the bowl game to discipline one of your best linebackers, not allowing him to play. Those are tough decisions, but he made it, and I admire him for staying, staying with it. You know, Tulsa, we haven't seen, throughout the season, they did a lot of bootleg passing. We haven't seen him do that this season yet. Tulsa had 93 yards of total offense in the first quarter, and 27 of them came on Brett Adams' rushes. Second and eight from the 25. Rudley with some time, drills a pass, and completes it to Marcus McVeigh. Rory made the stop from the safety position. Well, if there's any doubt in your mind about Rudley's arm, he showed it to you on that pass. He just rolled back there. Watch Watch the strength of the arm when next time he throws that type of pass. He went back there and set up and delivered it. There's a look at his career passing and some of the fellas he's... Well, they forgot to put one of the all-time Tulsa great quarterback, Jimmy Finks. He's not on that list. New Orleans Saints. Yeah, should have, been the, should have been the commissioner of the National Football League. He's a great man. He's After the person. first down, it's at the 36-yard line, and Adams hits a wall of Oregon Ducks. He picks up a yard or two, turns again on the stop for Oregon. And tried to run behind Jerry Ostrowski. Ostrowski's kind of a funny guy. 6'4", 312 pounds. He's got names for his blocks. Let's get into that after this play. <laughs> yeah, I'm anxious to hear it. On second and seven. They really spread the offense out on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane side of the ball. And they give it to their single back who's tripped up. Well, he's got... David Cassano made a great play getting back there. He's very quick. Rear Linderman. They're going to go without the huddle. They're going to go with no huddle offense now. They're on uh, third down. 8.57 to go. Third and seven is the situation from the 39. Rubley to pass. He wants a long one down the sidelines. The McVeigh hangs up in the wind, and Oldham has a second interception. And just to make sure he has it, Derek Horton gave him an escort on the way down to make sure he held on to the ball. And Oldham's a player. He knew, the, he knew the distance, and he also had a feel for that wind. He was throwing into the wind. He said he can't throw the ball that far. And he's probably right. That ball had to go about 60 yards, and he throws it a good way, good straight. But now watch when he gets up in the wind. Look at, see this fire come off? See that ball start fluttering? Now there's Oldham going up. You see, he didn't wait for the ball. He went up and got it at its highest point. That's exactly what the defensive secondary coach has taught him to do. All right, we'll be back with the ball. They trail Tulsa 7-3 in just a moment.
cold, gotta feel better fast. Then you've gotta get Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. People who use it will tell you. It works. It's fast. It works fast. Alka-Seltzer Plus, a fizz works fast. This is not what you want in a shave. Now, you've got the edge. This is the shave with six rich lubricants. This is the shave that reduces irritation. This is the shave. For less irritation, you've got the edge. New edge soothing aftershave. Alcohol is out. Aloe is in. Dull. 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 Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Dull. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Sharp people wear sharp watches. After the interception, Oregon will take over on their own 21-yard line. Musgrave, 5 of 13, 90 yards, an interception. Rubley, 4 of 10, 62 yards, two interceptions. Play-action fake. Musgrave, with some time, comes off a little bit of a screen to Lavelle. He's got the first down. He's hauled down from behind at the 34. Good pursuit by Mike Rawson, number 90. Those guys really do pursue yeah, on the really, defensive They, really, they did a good job. Musgrave did a great job of setting that screen. That was a good shot of Olam, of course. Eight in interception this season. Hey, the folks at Mislu who put him on their first team All-American certainly knew what they were doing, but he's a great athlete. Good feet, quick feet, good change of direction. We'll hear about him in the pros next year. Right stick to the right, hard gain to the left. High formation for the Ducks. First and ten from the 34. Lavelle again, and this time he's lucky to get a yard or two as Mike White makes the tackle, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas. LG Pinkston. His cousin Rayford Cooks played for the CFL team in Houston. Did he play for you, Rayford Cooks? No, no. After he was after me. Had to run that play inside, just straight one-on-one -on -one man blocking. Tried to go over the right guard, Koonsman, who's a good run blocker. Academic All-American. I like to hear that with a football player. That's the reason that school is good. Second and eight. 7.35 to go in the first half of play. That's Hargate in motion. The rolling pocket to the right. Musgrave. Way, way out, and it is caught. A sensational catch by Reitzing at the 22-yard line. Well, we said earlier that he makes those acrobatic catches, and that's exactly what he did there out of Tacoma, a junior. And he timed that perfectly. Again, remember now, Musgrave is throwing with the wind. And watch the spiral stay a little bit better on this one, but watch Wrightsy go up and take this way. Watch him go up and make a great over-the-shoulder, good concentration, look the ball all the way in. It wasn't that bad a defensive position by the defensive back. That was his longest reception of the year. In his first and ten, Musgrave again. Dumps a little one out to the tight end, Burton again, but it was behind him and he couldn't come back for it. And there's the man covering on the play, number 48, Sidney Prince, who's starting tonight. Well, Sidney Prince getting a great opportunity to play. 62, 230 pounder in there because of Luke being disciplined. Also, Dan Carabrella made a lot of pressure for the Golden Hurricane. 7-3, Tulsa on top. Oregon moving left to right. 7-0-3 to go in the second quarter of play. Out of the eye for the Ducks. They've got right and Hargain, the wide odds. Hargain had to spin all the way around. Catches it at the 10. Heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Wow, did he make a great move after he caught that pass, though, to bring it back to the inside and take it into the end zone. His fifth touchdown catch of the year. Well, take a look at the move he makes after he catches the ball. Well, right here. Now, watch you make this move. Boom. Spin back to the inside. Another move here, and he sees the end zone and dives to get in there. Great run after he caught the ball by, by Hargate. Turned a short gainer into a touchdown play by just great running ability. Right there, he spins away from the tackle. Makes another move there. Now it's a foot race. He's going to dive to get into that end zone. Craig McCallum. 
who has a field goal tonight, will try the extra point. And the Oregon Ducks now lead the Tulsa Golden Hurricane 10 to 7. And Hargate has four receptions for 82 yards. And that one was so impressive because he was hit for the sideline and had to come all the way back on the 360. Well, that's a great move by him. And again, the ability to run after you catch the ball is tremendous for a receiver. Coaches love to see that. So he turns this, it's basically just a short game, probably about a three or four yard pass. Now watch the move he makes there, planting that left foot, driving off of it. Now he sees where the end zone's at. And he's not worried about anybody except getting himself into the end zone. Great running after the catching the ball by Tony Hargame. He's got good size, too. You're looking at about a six foot one, 180 pounder. Boy, I'll tell you, what a difference from a year ago when he had only five receptions. That drive, by the way, was five plays, 79 yards. It took up a minute and 49 seconds. But Hargain had five catches last year. He now has over 40 this year. He had eight in one game against the Washington Huskies. You're talking Washington now. So this is quite a scoring drive and quite a credit. A 20 yard pass to Hargain. And now. I want to show you the kickoff man, Liam Hayes. He has been in the Independence Bowl. He was a walk-on for the Washington Huskies two years ago when they beat Tulane. So he's back at Shreveport, the only duck. And the kickoff to Hill goes to the 10. And Hill gets to the outside along the sidelines before he's wrestled down at about the 37. A nice return by Willie Hill, the freshman redshirt out of Dallas, Texas, and Rod Hardy made the tackle for Oregon special teams. Well, Willie did a nice job of setting that up. He started up like he was gonna go to the middle, and when he got up into the play, he made a break to the outside. A couple of the cover people from Oregon moved down to the inside, and he got outside and picked up good yards. Now, it's also starting out with pretty good field position here with 6.50 to go in the second quarter. They've had good field position. They've not been able to convert a couple of those uh, Oregon mistakes that they've had, a fumble and one interception. They did convert the other interception to a touchdown. Again, Rubley may have barked an audible on it. He was shouting down the line. Now he throws one to the outside. Malloy catches the ball at the 45, and he's really tickled by Daryl Reed, the senior from Los Angeles. Also, Bjarni Jensen. Rubley did a great job of reading the coverage on that play. Out to the left side here where the secondary man had backed off of him. I'll tell you one thing. I think he's, uh, he, he might have a little more than duck juice in him right now. You know, at your hometown of Cincinnati, they did that when they played San Diego. The Bengals did. Those guys, it was sub-zero in the early 80s. 81. They, they started that take off the shirt. Meanwhile, Gannon is stopped at the 47 on second and one. He may have got the first. Marcus Woods made the tackle. It'll be close. I think he may have picked it up, though, the way the officials are standing. Well, he's trying to run over Jerry Ostroskis, and I said before, Jerry, he, keeps, he grades himself. Now, he calls a couple names for his blocks. He calls himself, if he makes a decleater, that's when he takes a guy and knocks him <laughs> off and his pleats go up in the air. He, and the other one he calls is a roach block. A roach block is when he takes a guy and just pins him on his back. He grades himself that way with decleaters or roach blocks. He was the only true freshman to letter last year for Tulsa. On first and ten from their own 48, they trail Oregon 10 to 7. Play action fake. Rubley drills one over the middle and it is caught. Good catch by Gary Treat, the tight end co-captain. Very smart, a second year starter. He has 23 catches on the year. Reed makes the tackle. Boy, did a good job. Let's take a look at what you see. Now, you're a defensive safety man back, and this is what you see. There's a pretty good fake right in there. Now, you can see Gary Treat coming right down at you. He lays this over the top of the linebacker right here. Now, the secondary man tries to recover right there, thinking that he'll knock it out of his hand. But Treat said, no, no, I'm going to concentrate and catch this ball. You might as well catch it. You're going to get hit anyway. Oh, that's hot chocolate. She says, that feels good on my hands. Great play for the separated shoulder, too, on first and ten from the Oregon 28. Crumble and Rubley cradles the ball and protects it from the white uniform Ducks. And that's the second one of them they've had this evening. Some of this could be attributed, of course, to the coldness of the weather. But the first one, the center had moved out, and Rubley just didn't move with him. 5.06 to go in the first half. The clock is running. It is 10 to 10-7, Oregon leading Tulsa. You know, I think the center quarterback exchange fumble upsets coaches more than anything else that happens because you spend all kind of time doing that. Every practice, every day from the beginning, you, you center quarterback exchange. That just really upsets coaches. Rubley 6 of 12 for 85 yards on second and 10 from the Oregon 28. Quarterback blitz. He does get it away. He gets it out to Bill Beener, the tight end. Beener, the freshman redshirt from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Former fullback, but with such good soft hands, they made him a receiving tight end. Well, they did a good job with that play. They brought the strong safety. Derry came on a blitz from the outside, and he was right in the face of Rubley. But Rubley realized somebody had to be out there to get the pass too quickly. Beener, sixth catch of the year. And a 
very, very good one for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, and now at third and one. They've got three receivers and a tight end in motion. Rudling throws it to that tight end, Freed, who catches it inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, a well-designed play. Well, again, Rubley showed you his arm strength. Now, those are the kind of passes that you have to get there. Now, take a look at Rubley. Watch him come back. He knows where he's going right now. Look, he plant his foot. Look, he throw off that front foot and just drill that pass in there low. Defensive player did not have an opportunity to get his hand in there at all. Threw it away from the linebacker, right into the retreat to get down and catch it. First and 10 from the 14 for Tulsa. They trail 10-7, 3.45 to go in the first half of play. Quick handoff to Adams, and the only thing Adams sees are green numbers, white jerseys, and gold helmets. Peter Brantley, the first one there, the junior from Irvine, California, who started 18 games in a row, 10 and a half sacks, 70 tackles. Boy, is he quick. Well, he was quick, but also Andre Williams was also in on that play. The two of them just got in there and made it, did a great job with the play. Boy, Andre Williams took the most improved award, too, for the Oregon Ducks, and David Grader didn't like that play. As we go second and 12, a loss of two. But this is a pass. That's McVeigh in motion. That's Beaner in motion. Two tight ends now, one on the wing. Play action fake. There's Lots of trouble. Rubley rolling to his left. Trying to avoid everybody. Throws one to a wide open Beaner, who is going to be stopped at the 19. Another loss. Derek Horton, who is a star safety from the free safety position. Well, they tried to come with the bootlegs that they had a lot of success with this year, and that's the first one. As I said earlier, I was surprised he hadn't thrown one. Maybe they realized Oregon was going to defense, but he won the bootleg out to his left. Nothing there. He reversed himself, went back over to his right, and actually the completion kept him from making a big loss. See Ruby in the huddle there kind of talk about, well, let's forget about that. We've got to make a play here. Someone's got to make a big play here on third down. This is where their offensive linemen have to hit and lock those slanting and trap and uh, cutting defensive quick guys. Looks like they're going to be blitzing also. Now they're going to back off. Now they're backing off. Third and 14. Fourth time. Drills it over the middle and completes the pass inside the nine-yard line. A very nice catch. We'll have to wait until he gets up and find out that it's Archie Malloy. Let's take a look at this. This is an underneath pattern. Malloy is out to the right. Ruby's going back. He knows where he's going to go with it. Looking for him right now. They're trying to clear out and then Malloy will come underneath. You saw the back clearing out. You saw the tight end clearing out. Now Malloy comes underneath, makes the catch, cradles it in his arm, but it's not enough for the first down. They're going to have to settle for field goal and have to waste a timeout. It was called by David Fees, the place kicker. And both these kickers turn out to be guys who like to kick off the regular turf instead of the tee. We have 2.19 to go in the first half of play at the Independence Bowl. The Oregon Ducks leading the Tulsa Golden Hurricane 10 to 7. And we'll return to Freeport, Louisiana after this word from your local station. Regal Dodge is blowing them out. The Bay Area's number one volume dealer has the biggest discounts of the year, $2,000 plus. No money out of your pocket delivers. No payments till March 1990. Blowout savings and 89 caravans, Daytonas, Dakotas, van conversions and shells. You'll pay less than Regal on many with Regal's 2% over invoice super blowout discounts. 2% over invoice. No money out of your pocket delivers. No payments till March 1990. Rebates to $2,500. Hurry for blowout savings at Regal Dodge. What a difference a day makes 24 little hours C&R Express Tailoring Pick out your clothes today Pick them up tomorrow What a difference a day makes And the difference is you Express Tailoring Exclusively at C&R Good look at how David Feast does on close-range field goals. This one will be from 16 yards. And this one ties it up. We are tied at 10, and now Feast, who has 254 career points, needs only five to tie Howard Twilley for third all-time on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane scoring list. That's a lot of points for that leg, isn't it? Yes, sir. And I was talking about the fact both kickers, McCallum and Feast, are guys who like kicking off the ground. And it's amazing. They don't need the tee. And some of your best pro kickers were not glamorous college kickers. But when they got in the NFL or the CFL, 
they did so much better because they were just naturally better off grass or turf. Well, the rule change has, re change has really helped the college kickers prepare themselves if they have any opportunity at the pro level. And I think once they got into it, they just kind of psychologically said, hey, I've got to do it that way. Let's forget about it. By far the leading ground gainer for Tulsa is Adam with 33 yards and 14 carries. That's not unusual. Well, we're going to get a good opportunity to see Musgrave work here now with about two minutes and uh, 15 seconds. They're going to two-minute offense here now. See if they can get some points on the board before halftime. Oregon brought 106 players, Tulsa 76, and some of Oregon's players have uh, double, have, have to share the same numbers. So sometimes we're going to be hopefully calling the right person because some of them look very much alike. We can't wait for names from down here. Here's the kickoff. They're trying to keep it away from Oregon. Doesn't work. Makes it a tough thing in line. Look at him score through, look at him spin. He gets extra yardage to the 39-yard line. Before Brian Smith, who is in on the tackle for the second time tonight, makes the stop. Also in there was Antoine Jimerson. Well, they say Olam's got 4'6 speed, but I think he plays faster than 4'6. He's one of those athletes that just runs as fast as he has to run. They talk about 4'6. He gets out in the open. He's going to run fast enough. Nobody's going to catch him. 10 to 10 our score with 2.10 to go. The Oregon Ducks at their own, let's call it, 38-yard line. They've got a slot to both the left and the right. Let Barry, the only man back there. Musgrave toward the sidelines. Right sick, who has great body control and is known for sideline catches. Takes it to the Tulsa 40. Eric Barr has bumped him out. Well, Musgrave does a good job. Again, Tulsa sitting in zone coverage. You can see the underneath linebackers. He gets over the top of the underneath folks. Lays it right over the top in his hands. Yep. Oh, there's a penalty on the play, though. In the Oregon backfield. Could be First holding. down, 20. It is holding. Oh, holding penalty. Wipes out a big gain and puts him back. Then you wonder what Musgrave have had the time had they not been holding. You know, there's always two sides of everything. Well, every once in a while, official has to throw a flag. Because they get paid for it. They win a whole game without throwing a flag. And maybe that would earn their pay. That was well executed by Musgrave, regardless of the penalty. It was well executed. Good touch of putting the ball over the top of the underneath player. Again, the Ducks have a double slot on first and 20 from their own 28. They've got 2.04 to go in the first half of the time. Musgrave throws it under coverage and dropped by Reitzig in the middle of the field. In on the tackle with Sidney Prince. So there's a possibility that was going to be the old hook and uh, catch the ball and throw a lateral off of Reitzig was going to catch it, but Latin Berry was coming back to the outside. I think he was trying to ladder that ball back to uh, Berry from the backfield on that play. It's a ball game. You want that trophy. You want that win. Oregon under Rich Brooks got seven wins this year for the first time under Rich. Musgrave now eight for 18, 167 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Good screen pass situation. On second and 20. He got it. Matt and Barry underneath, spinning away to about the 38. No wonder you were at the. How about that call? And a defensive That's a perfect running. situation for it. Second down and long, perfect time for an offense for their to make the ball in a, a middle screen. That was a middle screen. Good execution. See him set it up. Now again, Barry running the ball after the catch. Picked up pretty good yard, but they've got an opportunity now. So you're going to have third down and 10. They've got a chance of picking up the first down. Just whittle a little bit at, at a time. Oregon called a timeout. We get a good look at that Barry. And a good look at one of the Oregon supporters. Tell you, Tulsa's a great, great town. They support that school with only, oh, just under 4,500 uh, students. They do a great program. And Oregon, I'll tell you, Eugene, the Willamette Valley, it's lush, it's green, it's beautiful. And I know the people up there are very, very proud. Uh, Tulsa's the only school in Oklahoma this year that's playing in a bowl game. <laughs> hey, boy, what a... What a hard-hitting statement that is, and very accurate, very concise. Well, I think the Tulsa folks have done a good job with their program. Dave Ray is going to continue to do a good job. A young coach will get out there and do some recruiting. And you have to be impressed with the number of folks that they have coming back. I think of their starting 22, about 17 or 18 of them will be returning next year. And a couple of the other positions, the seniors, they have played a lot of underclassmen with them. So they're going to be a, you wouldn't want to be lining up playing them early in the season next year with the experience that this group of juniors and sophomores have got. Oregon is only one of six on third down conversion. And it'll be third and ten from their own 38, which is where they started. Again, double slots for the Ducks. 1.48 to go in the half. We're tied at ten. 
Pump fake by Musgrave. Goes the other side, right signal, and that ball is picked off. Derek Williams, who stays in, there is no such thing as a nickel defense for Tulsa because Derek Williams becomes a coverage man. He's very good on passes, and he shows you why. Well, he's a big play linebacker. He's one of the type of linebackers, 6'1", 214 pounder. That's his third interception of the year. He's also got six sacks. So he's made a lot of big plays this year for him. This is another one. And again, Tulsa will come out now and don't think they'll stand in great underneath position. What happened? Again, you have to catch the ball, and linebackers sometimes don't catch those type of passes, but Williams showed his hands. So Tulsa has a minute 41 to try to break this 10-10 deadlock. They led 7-0. Oregon took a 10-7 lead, and then a field goal. as smoothly goes to pass. Just dumps it over the top, and it's batted down. Well, I'll tell you something. Pat Labonte and David Cassano are putting on pressure, and one of them got their hand on the ball. Well, that was supposed to be one of the delayed passes with the back coming out of the backfield. They're probably going to go without a huddle now so that Oregon, try to keep Oregon from making their substitution, which is exactly what they're doing. But they didn't get up there and line up fast enough to get it accomplished. Now, Eric Castle, number 12, is in there as an extra secondary man for the Ducks. Rubley on the draw, and all he does is draw Matt Labonte to his running back, Adams. So they lose four yards on the play, and the clock continues to wind down at 125 to go in the first half of play. Well, Labonte made the tackle, but Peter Brentley got the penetration and forced the play right back into Labonte. And the Ducks call a timeout, figuring they'll get the ball back, possibly now, on a punt. Well, when you're a passing team like both these teams, you want you want that football, you want the opportunity, because you know you can score in, in big chunks and give yourself a chance to put points on the board. Both teams play wide open, Pro thinking in the last two minutes of the, of the half. Rubley over there talking to David Rader and Mike working. I'll, I'll tell you what, brain trust on both these teams, very impressive. Well, I got good coaches on both sides of the ball, both these teams. Third and 13 will be the situation from the 31. It is cold here, folks, but the people, the fans, and the players, they don't object. Normally, I've been coming to Shreveport now for 10 years. We've had some nights of rain, and we've had one night of snow, but the last several years have been pretty good in the 50s. That Arctic front has hit the entire breadbasket of the United States and has just knifed all the way down here to northern Louisiana. It's just the least bit chilly. Anyway, with Texas, this is Tulsa and Oregon. It's Texas. The wind chill is 15 here. On third and 13. Rubley dumps it off, bat it in the air, and almost caught. Bounty battered it. Williams nearly caught it. Well, they tried to come with a middle screen. That was the play that they opened up the game with and had great success. It was designed as a middle screen. Take a look. You see him go back down. And if they hadn't got their hands on it, if it hadn't been batted, big play in there. But the defensive lineman gets his hand of ball almost interception. If that ball had been completed, they would have had a long gainer. Andre Williams made a dive for it, and so it will be a punt for Danny Phelps. Back there will be Obi. It's a good time to try to block one also. Here come the Ducks, but uh, more, just a little more than a token effort as Obi takes it on the run and fumbles the ball. And it is probably going to be Tulsa unless it got out of bounds. There was only a blue shirt around that ball. And if it got out of bounds, Oregon will have it. He sure had a chance to get it, but Oregon, again, has got a pretty good field position on about the 45-yard line. I hope he's trying to make things happen too much right now. He's trying to come up here and make a play. Took his eye off the ball. Instead of looking all the way in, he looked down to see where the coverage people were at. Now, right there, it looked like Tulsa was going to have a good shot at it, but he couldn't hang on to the ball. There's another shot at it. He looked those eyes up. He didn't look up. you got to catch the ball all the way in, then look where those defensive players were at. Craig Anderson looked like he had a great shot at it. Anderson, by the way, hurt his foot in practice trying to cover Hill, cutting. Three punts tonight for Phelps, and he's got a 34-yard average on those punts. And at 10 to go in the first half, 10 to 10, our score at the 14th annual Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana, the spirit of independence. Charles Kuralt was the guest speaker at the Minuteman luncheon yesterday and had a very good point. He said, you know, they could have called this the Steamboat Bowl, the Louisiana Bowl, but they chose independence. Well, Oregon will start itself in a hole again because there was a personal foul after the reception. Well, 
It was after Obi touched it, and then there was the scramble for the ball before it went out of bounds. It had to be, it had to be after the play was completely over for him to be first in the... Uh, well, they're confused. Well, they're going to make it first in 25. They haven't got the chain set yet. They're now moving the chain down. That's why the fish are holding it up. So, evidently, part continuous part of the play, so it will be first and 10. Yeah, first and 10 from the 30-yard line. Musgrave just pops one, and it's dropped. Latin Berry coming out of the backfield couldn't quite hold on to it. Well, he probably just as well off if Berry didn't catch that because he would have been tackled right away and the clock would have continued to, to move and they wouldn't hit any yardage. Now they still got a minute and four and want to get that ball downfield. It'll be second and ten. The scoreboard still got it second and 25, but the chain gang can only be stretched ten yards. Thomas in the second tight end is into the game. Now that's not unusual. He goes on to the left side and they've got a slot to the right with right it. Obi in the spot right. Flanker to the left. Musgrave to Perry out of the backfield, and he's hauled down at the 33. Tulsa has no penalties tonight. Oregon three for 29 yards as Lenny Williams made the tackle, and the clock keeps running. 49 seconds. Let's go with the no huddle offense now. Calling the play at the line of scrimmage. You can see Musgrave up there, all of audible and out to the side. Tell the receivers what to expect. Third and six, 37 seconds to go in the half. Musgrave toward the sidelines, almost picked off. It was intended for Reitzig. Bars was there, so was Derek Williams dropping back in linebacker coverage. Yeah, Derek Williams met himself. He thought he had a chance to get another interception. For linebacker to get two interceptions in one game, and of course, this fourth down, and they'll be forced to punt the ball. Well, there have been a lot of exchanges in the last minute and a half, both teams getting well, opportunity. Well, again, both teams not playing conservative, both being aggressive offensively. Cassano be back Frank Cassano the backup quarterback was the punt return man who averages 9.4 on the return broke one for 46 yards earlier this year 33 seconds to go in the half Penzo gets it blocked that ball is loose William picks it up he's got a convoy Tulsa's got a touchdown. touchdown that'll make real after highlight reach well, we said again William was a big play maker, and he made a big play there. Let's see who blocked this one. They were really coming in on Mark Penzo. Had to move over. The side. But the perfect down. Now, they were smart. And one good thing about all four, 98, 91, 44, all of those players had sense of not to try to go catch the football. But Lanton Barry greeted him at the goal line, but it didn't stop it. Well, he got in the end zone. He, he knew where he wanted to go. Rob Heckman was coming in there, and he was the one who bashed it down. Well, the extra point is good. And just like that, Tulsa has a 17-10 lead with 22 seconds to go. Special teams, special teams, special teams. Well, always a big part of the game, and they certainly made a big play there right before halftime. Let's take another look at this. Here he comes in. There's the foot. Looked to me like that might have been. No, we, we've got that. It is Heckman. Heckman came in there. I thought maybe it was Mike uh, White, but it was Heckman. And look at the look at this play. That's great. Trying to get in the end zone. That's a flip. Get that Herbert Harvey, actually. Herbert Harvey, number 41, is the guy who did it. And it's 17-10 in favor of Tulsa at the Independence Bowl with 22 seconds to go in the second quarter. The great thing about Herbert Harvey, the freshman redshirt from Palestine, Texas, yeah. former free safety, former track star in letters in high school track. Oh boy, he showed how quickly he could get in there. You have a feeling maybe that Dave Radar used the fact Radar used the fact that they were 14-point underdog to his advantage getting his team ready. Oh, Rich Brooks was furious about that sprint. <laughs> There's nothing to do about the point sprint. And of course, with uh, Bitson out. They were certainly deprived of one of their offensive weapons. So a 17-10, Tulsa on top of Oregon. 22 seconds to go in the half. And the kickoff will go to Oldham. And he gets a good head of steam right to the 40-yard line. So with 17 seconds to go, Musgrave and the Ducks will try their quack attack as Brian Smith made his third tackle on a kickoff. And there's no love lost between these two teams. Uh, tempers are flaring as Oregon frustrated by what just happened on the block putt for a touchdown. 
the officials separating everybody, trying to sort things out, place the ball down. Well, there's only 17 seconds to go, of course, in the half. Looks like Oregon beginning to back up. Maybe they're anticipating that the penalty's going to be against them. They're backing themselves up. Boy, they have, if it is a penalty, it'll be the fourth straight time they've had to be backed up after they've received the ball. After the play was over, personal foul against the receiving team, be first down 25. Now, there, that's a problem that is hurting Oregon's attack. If they could at least start from where they get the ball originally, they have a better chance, obviously. They've hurt themselves the last couple times here with big penalties on their on returns. And again, I don't think they'll play conservative here. It was 17 seconds ago here in the first half. Oregon sending Anthony Jones way out to the right side. Again, double slots for Rich Brooks' team. And the handoff goes to Matt Perry to about the 31 yard line the clock will just wind down well, that wasn't a conservative call that was a trap play they thought maybe the safety was way back about 15 20 yards they thought maybe they could break one up through the middle some people say that's conservative that really wasn't a conservative call and of course the time runs out for the half that's the end of the first half of play with a wild finish toward the second quarter as the tulsa golden hurricane leads the oregon ducks by the score of 17 to 10. we'll be back with our halftime activities after this Stetson.